Disclaimer, this episode contains descriptions of sexual abuse and child abuse. Listener caution is advised. Well, 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 hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I have some type of affliction, but Mm. I don't know what it is, and it is what it is. I'm here... (laughs) We've got a lot to talk about, so, so I can true. abdicate, you know, the throne and my responsibilities today on this on this Wednesday. You know, Chandler, we have been under some scrutiny for our actions over the past couple weeks. We have. I'm not sure if you're aware, <laughs> mm. but I think that God knew that attention needed to be cast elsewhere. Okay, that perhaps graver sins have been committed in this world mm-hmm. than our yeah. real series. Yeah. And today we are here, we are gathered today to discuss the sins of one P. Diddy. Wow. Yeah, I think that uh, God's hand was in this. I mean, from the fact that, you know, I got Botox for the first time three weeks ago and then was going to be filming Up Close Reels, like I I said that before. Mm -hmm. It's very clear, you know, that there was divine intervention all the way along. You know, we're walking in the sand, whatever, one (laughs) one set of footprints, something like that. Um, And yeah, and, you know, the spotlight has moved from, you know, us being the the scorn of the world to P. Diddy. Yes, Shana, we are gathered here today to discuss someone with perhaps crimes graver than ours. One P. Diddy. Is it it Puff Daddy? Is it P. Diddy? To me, they are one and the same. (laughs) The two monikers are synonymous, I think, I believe. So P. Diddy and his music, you know, his, the canon of his work, this came before our time, right? Yeah, I was trying to think about it. And I was like, can I even name like a P. Diddy song? I don't feel like I can't actually at all. So just an FYI, we're not here to discuss his contributions to American music. We are here to discuss the recent happenings with his relationship to the justice system. Okay. Mm -hmm. That said, we have other things on the docket as well. So I just want to make sure people know this is not just a P. Diddy episode. We are going to be getting into developments on the Ruby Frankie case. Yes. Very dark. We're going to talk about Meghan Markle's new brand, American Riviera Orchard. We've been Mm -hmm. dying to get into that. And then, of course, we have to debrief on Taylor and Travis's trip to the Bahamas. So there's a lot to get into, Chandler. Without further ado, shall we dive right in? Let's dive right in. Off the dinghy of Taylor and Travis's, you know, little crappy boat in the Bahamas into the dark waters that is what P. Diddy has been up to. Ready? You know, before we get into present day P. Diddy, let's also just say that this has been a long time coming. We reported on his crimes months and months ago with the Cassie lawsuit. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's been a long time coming to quote our favorite poet of the day. This guy, I will say, a trail of problems and violence and accusations seem to dog him at every turn. And so it seems like the U.S. criminal justice system has likewise been watching his every move. And there's enough going on for them to decide that they needed to raid his residences. So the... Department of Homeland Security Investigations in New York, Miami, and Los Angeles, their local law enforcement partners, Chandler, enacted a law enforcement action. They basically raided his homes in Miami, New York, and Los Angeles. The quote is just, we will provide further information as it becomes available. So we look forward to that information. But one thing to note, the FBI does not raid your home unless they really know you've been up to no good. Correct. I don't think that they can get a warrant for that type of Mm -hmm. raid unless the evidence is ironclad, essentially. I think that a lot of us got an education on this during the raids and now incarceration of one Jen Shaw. But oh, yes. Wow. The feds don't hit, you know, the beauty lab and laser parking lot and they don't hit your multiple homes unless they really know that they have tons and tons of shit on you. Right. So I don't want to be crass. I really don't want to cuss so much, but I think his ASS is G-R-A-S-S. Okay, Chandler? (laughs) You're you're welcome, mom. Because they raided his three homes. They detained his two sons, Justin and King, during the raid, although they were allowed to return to their Beverly Hills home later that evening to gather their belongings. 
Also arrested Chandler was Chong Combs's, and for people who are likewise a little bit ill-informed on this man, I think that is his given lawful name, Sean Combs, Mm -hmm. otherwise known as P. Diddy. So his drug mule, Brendan Paul, was arrested on Monday for cocaine and marijuana possession. So there's a lot of people in trouble right now. One thing to note about the raids as well is that they all happened at the exact same moment, which I find to be fascinating, you know, as someone who loves true crime, Mm. uh, you know, a student of the show 24. There's something so crazy and wild about, you know, like this one incident where, you know, in Miami, in LA, in New York, like Mm -hmm. it was just like go time. Um, And that was obviously by design so that, you know, no one at one of the houses could tip somebody off or find out that it was being raided and, you know, get documents or whatever evidence out of the house. What's the water sport with like the ballerinas? Synchronized swimming. I feel like there must be a so pipeline confused. from synchronized swimmers who are past their prime to federal raiders because it's just like everyone, it's an orchestra. Everyone is working in concert, okay, to achieve a similar goal. And they descend upon these homes. You're right, at the exact same moment because yes. the second that these ne'er do wells know that the feds are onto them, they will hide the evidence. So anyway, a beautiful, a beautiful orchestration. Can I tell you a quick story about a recent encounter I had with an FBI agent? Sure. So when I was on this bachelorette trip in Mexico recently. Oh, yeah. I met a lot of new friends, gals I didn't know before, and we're seated at this dinner. And the gal sitting next to me says, by the way, I love the podcast. I'm a big fan. So cute. And anyway, we get talking. She tells me she's an FBI agent. And I just want you to know that within moments, I got full body chills because I was so starstruck. I get very starstruck, I think, by like the FBI for whatever reason. Mm. And so we're like literally at this like outdoor bachelorette party, you know, big restaurant and on the beach in Cabo. And all of a sudden, I just look at her and I'm like, are you carrying? (laughs) Well, (laughs) because I was was so overcome with like, yes, totally. Yes. Yes. I mean, maybe a little bit older because... Um, I'm a little bit younger than the woman who's getting married, but I was just like so gripped all of a sudden because I was like, oh my gosh, like she could, she could save my life. If, if shit goes down at the office on the beach in Cabo, she's got Mm -hmm. our back. She's, she's got one strapped to her. She actually wasn't carrying at the time, but I, I had to know in that moment if she was carrying. No, so impressive. And I mean, this gets to a little bit more of a serious note, but I really do have so much respect for people who put themselves in harm's way Mm -hmm. for the safety of Mm -hmm. regular private citizens like you and me. Right, right. So thank you to that listener who hopefully is listening right now. We salute you and your duties. And we're glad you had a moment of reprieve in Cabo. We curtsy and we salute to you. Salute exactly. You. you know, speaking of islands, speaking of warmer climes, do you know where P. Diddy is right now, Chandler? Isn't he in Antigua? Yes. So his private plane, his PJ flew from Miami's Opa Laka Executive Airport. I probably mispronounced that. And yeah, embarrassingly, I've never been on a PJ and I never left that private executive airport. I'm giving myself away. But his PJ left Miami Opa Laka (laughs) Executive Airport and he is apparently in Antigua right now. So there must be no extradition, you know, agreements. Yeah. was recently in it. No, I'm not actually going to get there. People are going to be like, get to the case. Stop with the personal stories. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway. Have you been to Antigua? You've we're been not, to Anguilla. We're, we're sticking to the case, Chandler. Okay, we're sorry. We're moving forward. It sounds okay. like a lovely destination. I'd love to go someday. I think it's a little isolated. That's all I was going to say. Yeah. Kagan okay. has recently been. I think the infrastructure and, you know, it might not be a place you want to be for a long period of time. So maybe where did they go in succession? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he'll go to Crimea after this. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so Diddy's been in trouble with being accused of sexual assault, being accused of a lot of things for a minute now. And Mm -hmm. a lot of our attention right now is on recent lawsuits, but we're going to back up and share some previous accusations against him. So on November 16th, 2023, Cassandra Ventura, otherwise known as Cassie, singer of The Bop, Me and You. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Great song filed a federal lawsuit on November 16th, 2023 against Sean Diddy Combs in New York federal court. Her lawsuit includes graphic claims of sexual assault, physical abuse, and an allegation that Combs, her ex-boyfriend, would force her to have sex with male sex workers while he watched. Diddy settled the case with Cassie a short time later while asserting that the payout was not an admission of guilt. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember discussing this. It's horrifying. 
A week later, Chandler, after that lawsuit is settled swiftly on November 23rd, 2023, Joy Dickerson Neal came forward with sexual assault allegations from 1991. Then a day later, another Jane Doe comes forward with allegations. About two weeks later, on December 6, 2023, Diddy and former bad boy president Harv Pierre were accused of raping a woman when she was 17. And then on February 26th, 2024, a month ago, producer Rodney Little Rod Jones sues Diddy for sexual assault. So Jones's lawsuit is really what we have right now in terms of accusations that are clearly laid out against P. Diddy. So we're going to get into what was alleged in that filing, but here's a quick summary. So Jones's lawsuit alleges that P. Diddy or Sean Combs regularly hosted sex trafficking parties with underage women and illegal drugs and implies record label executives looked the other way and financially benefited from access to celebrities and dignitaries like the British royal Prince Harry, who's not accused of any wrongdoing or of attending the parties himself. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr. is also being accused of sexually assaulting Rodney Jones in the same lawsuit. So how is Prince Harry even involved in this if he's not accused of anything I, th- I feel like that is a headline that's going around right now that mm-hmm. he's a part of this in some way but you know he didn't do anything okay so when it comes to prince harry i just feel like celebrities are at parties with other powerful people all the sure. time i mean we have prince harry at that party where he dressed up in the nazi uniform we have him at a party with a bunch of naked girls in vegas mm-hmm. I think that you would be naive to say that Prince Harry has always been in, you know, very scrupulous PG environments. Now, has he been in environments with underage girls? I think that is a stretch. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are going to be listening to that and being like, um, all the royals, everyone powerful. (laughs) That's exactly what they're doing. But, um, I guess I'm naive enough to still believe that that sweet ginger has just been up to, pedestrian debauchery debauchery yeah okay so here's what's in the filing of rodney jones and this was put together by a wonderful person on reddit named sejope s-e-j-o-p-e so i don't want to take credit for this i did not read the entire filing and compile this information i'm definitely ripping off this person's important work so thank you sejope so jones claims diddy likes to sexually assault everyone including underage girls and rodney jones who is male He also claims Diddy bragged about shooting someone in a club in 1999 and getting away with it. Allegedly, J-Lo snuck the gun into the club and gave it to him when he got in an argument with someone. He got rapper Shine to take the fall for it. Jones claims Diddy threatened to kill his mom if he didn't participate in sex acts with him. Jones claims Diddy wanted to pass him off to Cuba Gooding Jr. on his yacht to perform sex acts. Jones claims that Diddy would spike all of the drinks for women at his parties, and there would be separate bottles for the women and the people he wanted to spike and him and his crew. Oh my gosh, this continues. This is so crazy. Jones believes Diddy has hidden cameras in every room in his house and has tons of footage of famous celebrities, athletes, and high up figures doing things they know they shouldn't have been doing. And because of this, he's above the law. He claims Diddy's head of security is able to fix the quote problems because he has deep connections in the Miami and California PD. Because of this, he's able to get away with the above allegations. It's so interesting. It's like painting a picture really of a low key Epstein. That's what I was just going to say. I mean, the hidden cameras and bugs, you know, Mm -hmm. throughout the house so that, you know, just in case anyone comes after you, you can blackmail them or it definitely is giving Epstein. I mean, you also have to consider, you know, what celebrities right now are freaking out, cannot sleep at night. This guy, he is not going to take one for the team. Okay. He's going to bring everyone down with him. If, If the ship is going down, he's cutting off the lifeboats. Let's just say I hope Cuba Gooding Jr. is scrambling right now. He sounds disgusting. Yeah, I highly doubt his internal headspace is one of serenity and calm. That's for sure. Um, So getting back to what was alleged in this case, Jones claims Diddy shot someone in his recording studio and then instructed everyone at the studio to say it was a drive-by and he was shot outside, which I guess everyone agreed to. His head of security made some calls. And even though all of the blood was inside and none of it was outside, no arrests were made. And they put out a fake story that he was shot in a drive-by. Wow. This is insane. I mean... With Epstein, I'm not trying to say Diddy is worse than Epstein because I 
I think at this point, you're just like at the lowest level of hell. You know, it's hard to make differentiations there. But it's just crazy to have this added layer of violence, like killing mm-hmm. people. Right. Killing people. I think it's really interesting how, Allegedly. you know, super wealthy, super famous people, when they reach a certain level of power and influence, they just fully use it for evil. Like they don't yeah. use it to, you know, take luxurious. I mean, they probably do, but, you know, they don't just use it to, you know, like our girl Taylor Swift go to, you know, a, a beautiful home in the Bahamas for a week. It's mm-hmm. like they need to somehow, yeah, get wrapped up in crime and violence. This is what um, Bard the GM on Reddit said. He said, have millions of dollars and are super famous. You can either A, enjoy a good life with friends and family, travel the world and focus on your interests, or B, start a sex cult or human trafficking ring. It's strange how frequently people go with option B. Literally. I mean, I I do think it's like a disease where you suddenly think that you are untouchable and you can just do whatever you want. You can follow whatever whim or dark desire you might have because you're just above it all and you can get out of anything. I mean, it's so interesting because I can't relate to this at all. Like, yes, I have a lot of energy for this podcast and my ventures, the things I like to create. But when it comes to my just energy, my personal life, I just want to be resting and living in luxurious environments. I have zero desire to start a sex cult devoted to me or traffic young men. Can you imagine, Chandler, if there was a distinct pattern of women getting wealthy and powerful and then also being caught with a bevy of 17-year-olds? No, I can't. <laughs> I actually can't fathom. That's fathomless, as Katie Maloney said, my new it's favorite word. It's literally fathomless. And I guess it just doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, these people, I think that they're so perverse. They're so dark-sided, okay? Yeah. They want to be above the law and they want to do what humans are not allowed to do. We've talked about this with Army Hammer, but when mm. you when you've just literally had it all and when you've had it all for so long, like your dopamine receptors, I don't know, something happens where like the the right. normal stuff doesn't do it for you. Doesn't do it. And for so you yeah, anymore. maybe you need to lead, lead a life of crime or, mm-hmm. you know, once you get away with one small thing, you then suddenly feel like, well, maybe I could dabble in this and I'll still get away with it. And it sounds like a lot of times they do for years and years. I think it might be a good thing that our career, you know, we got a little jolt, but then we got pulled back a little bit because who knows Chandler with the trajectory we were on, who knows what we would have, what we would have gotten up to. Okay. (sighs) I'm, you know, the ways that we would have just taken so many beach vacations (laughs) would have been, yeah, perverse for sure. Okay, so here are some final accusations. Jones claims Diddy's chief of staff would instruct workers for Diddy to carry around bags with all of his favorite drugs and that anytime Diddy wanted his drug of choice, whoever's closest had to have it handy. This included his butler, maid, and others. Jones claims Diddy would hire sex workers, often underage, drug them, and force them to perform sex acts with him and others. Jones claims Diddy didn't want to pay him more than $29,000 worth of work he did over a 13-month period. I mean, the 30 grand is the least of this. Yeah. It's the least of these accusations. Wow. I just know, too, that there are so many other celebrities who do this. Like, it doesn't even surprise me that he was having underage sex parties. Name them. Name Name them. Name them. Let's get in a lawsuit, Chandler. You just know. Like, is this surprising to you? It's horrifying, but is it surprising? No, it's not surprising, especially when people tell you who they are, believe them. I mean, what are all these rap songs about? Like sex, right. drugs, rock and roll, rock and killing roll. people. <laughs> we need to go back to church. Everyone needs to go back to church. Look, Lauren, there are just days where I feel like I need to get my butt back in a pew and I need mm-hmm. to, you know, step through some church doors to remember what's important. <laughs> Exactly. So will this man get arrested? I, I, I'm i confused because his homes were raided. You know, people surrounding him were arrested. Mm-hmm. What's he doing in Antigua? When When it's is a, he going to come back from Antigua to get arrested? It's a great question. I think that this is when someone's preference for luxury undermines their potential, you know, freedom and being at large. Because I think that he was like, I had to, I I can't fly commercial in a disguise. I can't even get on a plane that I charter. I have to be on my own private jet. And it's like, these jets are tracked. So the US knows exactly where he is. I'm a hundred percent sure of it. We, We all know where Taylor Swift is, you know, or we we can know if we want to engage in that sort of 
breach of her privacy. But yeah, no, I think that it's dumb of him to insist on taking his own PJ in his escape. They know exactly where he is. I'm sure they will arrest him. Obviously, you know, this country is capable of bringing back Keith Raniere from Mexico. So they're definitely (laughs) going to bring back P. Diddy. Oh, man. I I truly hope that he gets sent away. And I honestly love to see criminals like this fall. You guys, we have with us a list of older lawsuits, a list of his arrests. So if you want a deeper dive on the crimes of P. Diddy, let us know. But I just feel like it's gotten yucky enough for me. And we like to keep this podcast a little bit lighter, a little bit more fun, a little more frothy. Yeah. I wonder what J-Lo's thinking right now. That's my only other question. You know, Chandler, I think that Ben Affleck has his demons, but I think she's thinking she dodged a bullet, probably Mm -hmm. literally on some level. By the way, there's an ex-girlfriend of his who he had four children with. So someone retweeted, why is nobody talking about Kim Porter's mysterious death? She allegedly was coming out with a tell-all book about P. Diddy, and then she died mysteriously. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I'd like to see the book get thrown at him. Let's move on to lighter fare, though, shall we? Ruby Frankie, lighter fare? No, let's talk about Taylor on vacation. I feel like we need a palate cleanser. I agree because (sighs) in looking at these photos, I was struck with the biggest itch and yearning for a beach vacation that I've maybe ever had. It's been so cloudy in New York and Mm. I would just give anything to to have my footprints in the sand right now with a drink in my hand like Taylor Mm. and Travis, you know, were in the Bahamas. It's sweet to see them just happy and ensconced together away in the Bahamas. She seems so happy. I mean, girlfriend yeah. always has a drink in hand, which I can absolutely relate to on a gorgeous beach vacation. So I appreciated that. Um, there's a hilarious tweet, Chandler, where someone says, so there's a picture of Taylor and Travis frolicking in the waters. Mm-hmm. You know, Taylor has a, a Bev in hand. Travis is looks like he's belting out something or laughing and they put travis hey taylor viva taylor don't travis viva taylor travis i swear to god (laughs) yeah well if i you know honestly i i tried to forget that moment so you bringing it up (laughs) i actually hate these photos now because i had i had moved on i had forgotten um and now i'm back to having the ick no, Lauren, I, I love these photos. I love to see Taylor on a beach vacation. She's like all of us. You know, she finds rest on a beach with a drink in her hand. I love to see that that is truly how she vacations. I mean, if we remember the Joe Alwyn photos as well, you know, like this is a girl who's just like everyone else. I, I do find it interesting that she always chooses the Bahamas. She finds peace in crystal turquoise waters. It's true. It's not very original of her, but we can all relate. I find her decision to to go to the Bahamas to not be mysterious. Yeah. The Bahamas, especially Harbor Island, I think is where she was, yeah. is supposed to be absolutely phenomenal. I really want to go. Oh, really? Gigi Hadid, yeah, went to, I think it's called Palm Heights, yeah. the hotel there. It looks super cute. Let me tell you what is a mystery to me, Chandler. Yeah. Well, okay? I think you know what's coming. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jill Zarin voice. But I have to be honest. I look at where she stayed and oh, yeah. my my soul grieved her and travis rented out a very expensive mansion in the bahamas mm-hmm. and first of all before we even get to the interiors i just feel bad for her i'm just gonna guess she's it. not I just sad feel like, i know she's not sad but it just would it looks so lonely. I feel like part of the fun of going on a vacation is being in the mix. It's like going to a hotel and getting uh, a, a beverage at the lobby. Well, it's Taylor being Swift is getting side. a beverage at the, at the lobby? No I way. Know, but I know not, she's that's not. And for she you, a, a, a nobody. I know, but I feel – I just look at this and I'm like, you have to basically like rent out mansions to make it feel like palatial. But it just like looks so lonely. Once again, Thoughts? that is something you look forward to as a nobody. You like to be in a <laughs> lobby of a hotel having a drink for whatever reason. These are just like peasant you love a Marriott joys. bar. <laughs> Taylor Swift does not want to be around people. I mean, maybe around close friends. And she likes to go out to dinner. But I'm just saying if she's going to be on vacation where she's going to be finding true rest, she's yeah. not going to be like, you know, moving through like swarmy crowds. It's true. It's true. Of course. I just, I, I, you know, I I do not feel bad for her whatsoever. 
Well, did you feel bad at all when you saw the Tommy Bahama maximalist dated interiors of that vacation home? I mean, no offense, but like, even if I could have afforded it, which I could not have, I would have never added that to cart on Airbnb. I would have. Yeah, I feel like that home was dying for a Studio McGee makeover. (laughs) I saw one of the captions on like the photos from probably like the, you know, Airbnb or whatever description. And it said like, the rooms have a tropical feel. And I was like, (laughs) you got that right. They nailed that part. (laughs) A tropical feel. It is tropical from stem to stern it is like bamboo bedding a pineapple yes. chandelier palm leaf wallpaper of every color it's a lot i also wonder like with that many bedrooms i mean i guess for her security or something maybe they have to stay there but yeah it, it does seem a little bit lonely being in that huge house all by themselves yeah also chandler can we talk about the boat <sighs> I know it's just me being a snob, but I just would think that if you're Taylor Allison Swift, a billionaire, you are not on like the dingiest dinghy in the Bahamas. The boat looks so low rent. The setup they had on the beach, it was just kind of giving frat party vibes. Honestly, kind of more like a bachelor date, like a day date bachelor. Yes. You know, I I think the bachelor would even be nicer. It was just like a cooler and some towels. Well, but maybe our girl just wants to feel normal. She doesn't, you know, she just wants to have like a low key setting. I don't know. I don't know. I want to say, like, doesn't she want a day bed with some beautiful plush, you know, little mattress that yeah, she can so relax nice. into? Doesn't she want shade? Doesn't she want an attendant? I mean, here's the thing, Lauren. <sighs> I'm confused. She definitely had attendants. There were, there were like staff serving her drinks. But these were the that. photos we got. And Taylor Swift doesn't, you know, release photos unless she wants photos to be released. Correct. Correct. It's so very maybe clear this was, this was set up. This was just, you know, this was the day where they were going to take photos, where it was going to be low key, relaxing on the beach. And I'm, you know, who's to say she didn't have a gorgeous yacht day? Chenna, why am I playing checkers while you're playing 5D chess over there? You're absolutely right. So I 100% believe that this was set up. They are getting these photos. They are getting this content out there. Mm-hmm. Now she's doing press in LA. She's pre-taping shows that are in all, and those interviews will come out when the album drops. You are correct. Maybe they, it's not a good look for her to be clearly lounging as a billionaire. What they want is the people's beach day. Okay. Yes. 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 Drink okay. in the ocean. You could be at a sandals resort for Corona. all we know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Could be all inclusive, yeah. $400 yeah. Dollars a night. It's very interesting. These beach photos are so similar to the ones with Joe from years ago. It's true. This it's is true. just, the, I think this is the, the scene that she likes. Um, I will say, though, there's a lot more PDA in these ones. Yeah. And I also think, though, that the Joe ones, there's only a few and they're super far away. These seem much more sanctioned. Yeah. There was like a ton of photos. A Kissing, ton. hand yeah. on the butt. You know, like video, yeah, everything. Also, just because this is a sister chat, chat between two girlies, I do want to say that she seemed really comfortable in her body and really relaxed and really happy and healthy. And I just think that like she looks so beautiful and there was something really nice about that too, you know? She looks amazing. She seems very happy. And while I do have the ick for Travis that comes and goes, Um, Mm -hmm. I'm happy for her. I continue to be happy for her. And I hope that this rest was exactly what she needed because it was very much so deserved. Absolutely. Okay. So moving on, let's keep it light. Let's keep it light. And then we'll finish with Ruby Frankie for people who don't want descriptions of child abuse, um, which is probably a lot of people listening. I'm not even sure I want to get into it, but a lot of people, by the way, Sorry, hard segue. If you want to vote on what we talk about in these episodes, please join our broadcast channel on Instagram. The only reason we're talking about this Ruby Frankie development is because I put it up on the broadcast channel. Mm -hmm. And it's something you can join for free. It's basically just a DM. You get a DM from us on Instagram. And then you can easily tap and like or put a thumbs down. And we're going to put out those topics, what you guys want to hear about. And a lot of people, an overwhelming number of people wanted to hear about P. Diddy and Ruby Frankie. Yeah. So we're going to get to Ruby Frankie in a second. Per your wishes, everyone. Let's talk about Chandler. The announcement. Okay. The, oh, do you hear, do you remember this I can hear. Are you oh, hearing birds singing? Gar- I'm in the gardens. Just a calm night, cutting roses. The kids mm-hmm. are asleep. Do you remember mm-hmm. that scene? That mm-hmm. wistful Mm -hmm. verdant scene in the lush Mm -hmm. gardens of montecito with megan the duchess of sussex 
Is there anything more we could want? We could hope. Are you for? carried away? Completely swept away, ensconced. Maybe this episode is us coming back to God because I do feel like prayers have been answered with this announcement. So everyone, Megan Markle, she has released the soft launch of her new brand, American Riviera mm-hmm. Orchard. Mm-hmm. Okay. I am absolutely thrilled about this development. If you are an OG listener or a new listener, I'm going to remind you or tell you that on this podcast, we have issued a passionate exhortation to Megan saying, Pleading. we know you love philanthropy and you love doing good, but we really need you on the gram slinging some beautiful linens, making some green goddess dressing in your Montecito home. We want the Megan being Megan content. We essentially handed her the social media strategy to take over the world. And I think she heard us and she's taking our advice. Is she a pop apostle? Is she listening to the podcast? She probably is. Hi, Megan. She's taking my career advice. Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, No, I am so excited about this. Here's the thing. Lover or hater, we can all agree she's stunning. And true. For me, the dopamine high I get when I see beautiful images of her or videos and this content of her in Montecito in her home. I can't Mm -hmm. tell you how many times I've literally watched the scene of her in the garden. It's just like ASMR. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. The fact that she's now gonna be on a content treadmill pumping this this out to us doing recipe vo- videos in her kitchen. Okay, let me get to the description of what is to come. Yes, I want to get into this because the content that we are expecting to see from her has been updated a couple of times. Like they've applied for more trademark or they've applied for different kind of trademarks, right? Or something like that. So a source told People that the lifestyle brand will, quote, reflect everything that she loves, family, cooking, entertaining, home decor. I mean, when you first see the crest, you're like, is this a a bedding company? Like, is this just an up-leveled pottery barn? But no, Chandler, this is a full lifestyle TIG 2.0 site. Yep. And I'm I'm so excited about that. Can I can I rattle off some of the things that we might expect to see from this brand? I would love nothing more at this moment. So basically, a a trademark application previously obtained by Page Six Style linked the American Riviera Orchard brand name as a planned distributor for a broad variety of homewares and goods. But new details have emerged in the trademark application, which expands the previous list. All right. So we're talking household goods, stationery, cookware, gardening implements, beverages, foods and condiments. Also, American Riviera Orchard will market fragrance sachets. I don't know what that really means. Fragrance sachets. Lavender sachets, non-medicated skincare preparations, bath and shower gels and salts, non-medicated hair preparations, bath soap. Literally, the list goes on and on. Potentially bowls, dishes, beverages, teapots, spoons, cookie cutters, soaps. Spoons. She's essentially opening up a Target. (laughs) And guess what? I'm going to be shopping there because I want to vote with my dollar channel for this brand to continue to exist. I cannot see this go in the vein in the direction of R12 Productions. I can't have this no. be the podcast 2.0. I need this brand to succeed. Look, as a regular window shopper of luxury items, I know this website is going to be a bookmark for me. It's it's going to be somewhere I go to get a gift to maybe you know peruse to get inspired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I might as well make it my landing page. <laughs> make it your homepage. It's going to slap. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the Instagram, the content, the TikToks, the reels, the Q&As. I mean, mm-hmm. we're all influencers now. Everything. That's what's hilarious. It's like Oscar winners, duchesses, doesn't matter what you've accomplished. At the end of the day, you know what these people want to do? They want to sling some links. Right, right. I can't wait to swipe up to shop with Meghan Markle's. You can bet your bottom dollar I'm going to be swiping. Lauren, I just want to quickly draw a little conclusion. I think mm-hmm. that the timing of this launch, also, you know, the article about how Kate did not tell them because she couldn't trust them. Mm-hmm. I think this just reveals that, you know, these people are not a united front at no. all. Mm-hmm. And behind the scenes, the drama is still very much so real and brewing. So we posted this on Instagram, but it's being reported that Megan and Harry asked to return to part time royal duties. Did you see this? No, I didn't see this. This is what page six is reporting. I think this has to be a total lie. I think this is exactly what Megan wants to be doing. I think there's so much bad blood in the waters, clearly, Mm -hmm, given mm -hmm. that 
KP, Kensington Palace, had to make it clear that yes. Megan and Harry did not know about the cancer and they didn't feel like yeah. they could share it with them because they're not to be trusted. I think there's so much bad blood in the water. Megan and Harry, the last thing they are going to do, let me tell you, they're going to intern for this podcast. Okay. They're going to get yeah. jobs at the supermarket. They're going to drive for Uber. Okay. They're going to become task rabbits. They will do anything. Okay. Yeah. Before they go on bended knee to the crown right. for those gigs back. Also, I'm sorry, the UK basically hates them. You think they want to go do meat walks or whatever they are? Not meat walks. Meet and greets. Nice meet and greets. <laughs> meat walks. Uh, well, there's no, some, they like, don't. Phrase they have for them, but yeah. Yeah. No, they absolutely do not. Um, and I don't. I don't believe that at all. Not for a second. I mean, it also makes no sense with this launch of American Riviera Orchard. No, I mean, they are just about to live their best lives. And I think that this is going to be a smash hit. I think there's so many people who feel the way we do mm -hmm. that don't care so much about all the accusations against, against Megan. And yeah, would love to, would love to be inspired by, you know, her vision Chandler of the American Riviera. I do like that she's up leveling our country with its own Riviera. I've never heard about the American Riviera before today. Have you? Is that a real thing or was this just a blog name generator? So I think Megan loves to spend time on the French Riviera, on the Italian okay, Riviera, sure, per sure. chance. And so I think she's inspired by those luxurious, beautifully appointed environments. Mm -hmm. And so for her, it's time to create, okay, and espouse the virtues of the American Riviera mm. in Montecito. Oh, wow. Stunning. Gorgeous. Stunning. My, my wet dream for this yeah. is that her and Gwyneth... Mm. do some type of collaboration. We get a lot of videos of them together, joking, laughing. Maybe Gwyneth shows her the way to relatability. Uh, right. I would love nothing more than that, that type of collaboration. I mean, they're probably only a stone's throw away. They both are in Montecito. I mean, Brad and, and Harry like playing pickleball or something, doing a workout kidding? in the garden. Are you are, kidding I mean, me? sorry, I'm, I'm just getting into full fan fiction erotica. I cannot wait. I absolutely cannot wait for the Goop X American Riviera Orchard collab. Um, Let's get into the name for a quick second. American yeah. Riviera Orchard. It's a mouthful. It's three words. American. It's a lot of syllables. Yeah. I can't even it's count a lot. them right now. Yeah. I have a few names that I think that probably might have hit the cutting room floor. Okay. okay. Yeah. You are an expert at coming up with blog names because you came up with <laughs> several blog names in your, in your heyday. It's I would true. like you to share them, but you probably won't want to. Why not? Everyone, I used to be the author of several fashion, <laughs> failed fashion blogs. One, my first fashion blog, Cupcakes and Diamonds, heavily inspired slash ripping off one Rockstar Diaries. I was definitely a Naomi Davis fan girly, yeah. like all of us back in the day in like 2009. So I had Cupcakes and Diamonds, Chandler. That was like when Cup of Joe was really big. All of those fashion blogs on, on Blogger or Blogspot.com. Yes, yes. I also had that girl with the freckles. Okay. <sighs> and then I hit. had, I remember I had um, in the corner of my website, it had freckles, the definition. Okay. Oh, and, wow. And Angel kisses? <laughs> yes. And so I showed my sister Ashley and she was like, it's kind of like if someone has a nail and then they take a hammer and they just start pounding the <laughs> nail. She's like, it's a little too much. It's a little X. It's a little obvious. I mean. A little over the top. The, her critique was fair, but imagine, you know, the cash you'd be sitting on if you just stuck with either one of those. I, legitimately, I wouldn't be, you know, starting from scratch with this podcast. Anyway, I, I think those are the two big ones. Oh, I mean, I remember when you, you came to me and you said, this was probably after these two failed ones. And you said, well, what about Bramble? <laughs> <laughs> just a fully made up word. No, I think a Bramble, actually, that's part of one of my ideas for... Megan, because I thought that instead of Santa, Santa Barbara, she could do yeah. Santa, Santa Bramble in bloom. So you still kind of have a thing with that word. <laughs> no, I just was thinking of corny alt names because American yes. Riviera Orchard on the corn scale, you know, if, it's, it's corny. Yeah. If it's not also not done well, if the branding isn't very elevated, it can very quickly feel like, yeah, corn dog. American Riviera would have just been so much cleaner. Yeah. It's like, why do we need to throw orchard onto there? Like, like two names. You get it. You have chickens. It's, it's confusing. She's like, it has to be on the Riviera. That's perfect. Let's keep it that. No, yeah. but I have to be eating fruit on the Riviera. 
Right, right. I can hear the discussions, you know, in the boardroom, the Zoom calls. So I also have an alt name Chandler for American Riviera Orchard, Patriotic Lavender Field. Mmm. Strikes a different tone, but <laughs> it's American. Arresting. It's nature. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's giving Montecito. My right. other one, a little bit more, I would say, kind of in the vein of replicating the French Riviera or the Italian Riviera. So instead yeah. of, you know, Saint Tropez or Saint Bart's, what about right. Saint Montecito? Mm. Mm. I'm sh- I 100% believe that that was on the list. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I bet my unborn child's life on it. <laughs> I can't wait for what whatever is to come. The products, the the dog food, the spoons. I I can't wait for it. We'll be buying what this bee is selling. Yeah. Okay. So I'm grateful to have had some lighter fare before we conclude this episode with the developments in the Ruby Frankie case. So as we said at the top of the episode, a quick disclaimer that we're going to be reading these developments, which include graphic descriptions of child abuse. So we recommend caution as you proceed to listen to this episode. Okay, Chan. So I have a little summary from Time Magazine when it comes to Ruby Frankie that I'd like to read just for people to get oriented for those unfamiliar with Ruby Frankie. So in February, the former YouTuber Ruby Frankie and her business partner, Jody Hildebrandt, were sentenced to up to 30 years in prison for four counts of aggravated child abuse. So the news is that last week, Washington County Attorney's Office released evidence from the case, including body cam footage from the two women's arrests, Frankie's handwritten journal entries in which she justifies abuse, over 200 photos, witness statements, and more. Investigators say that both Frankie and Hildebrandt were motivated were motivated by religious extremism to commit the abuse against Frankie's children in an attempt to teach the children how to properly repent for imagined sins and to cast the evil spirits out of their bodies. This is according to a statement from the Washington County Attorney's Office. So yes, Ruby Frankie was the Mormon YouTuber, Mm -hmm. mommy blogger who, you know, rose to prominence on YouTube with her you know, bevy of children, her large yes. brood. Eight and Passengers, I believe, was the name of her YouTube channel. Right. And so people were riveted by her content. And over time, she focused on her disciplinary tactics and how she kept an orderly home and basically mm-hmm. how she ruled over her children, essentially. Yeah. And people were very disturbed because it was clear, if you watch the YouTube videos, that she was abusing her children. And It wasn't until one of her sons escaped from the house and went to a neighbor's house that she was actually arrested. And so anyway, it's a really horrible case. We're not going to kind of go over all of it right now. We're just going to discuss the new developments. We do actually have a deep dive on this case. So if you want to go back, let me actually pull up what episode number that is for people. I can look it up too. Oh, thank you, Chandler. So this is episode 182. Um, it's also got a little bit of Taylor and Travis in it as well, but it's in a r- eight passengers Ruby Frankie deep dive. So you can listen to that before you listen to this if you sh- if you so choose. So this is what the developments are, Chandler. The Washington County's attorney's office shared multiple pages of Frankie's diary in the evidence release in which she wrote about trying to get rid of the devil from her children. So I'm going to get to the actual entries, which are super disturbing. It's a long, long journal. Okay. It's kind of crazy because she really details her crimes like in this journal. And one of the things that's the most arresting to me about it is she clearly thought she was perversely doing the right. Like she was convinced yes. of everything she was doing. Yes. She definitely thought that she, you know, was literally single handedly fighting evil. Mm-hmm. And, to the, you know, to the point where her and Jody had their own like family counseling business like where they thought they like they had it figured out and it's all connected to the chad daybell and Lori daybell case all these people believed in the same like doomsday offshoot Mm -hmm. of the lds church and they really believed that their children were possessed by demons which is why Lori daybell and chad daybell killed their children it's just so horrific to even say out loud. Um, and so I think the big thing as we're kind of reading this is is realizing that, you know, you have to be really careful what you get carried away about. And, you know, that might be rich coming from me over the past couple of weeks, but you have to be really careful what you start really believing and getting fixated on. Yeah. 
and the dark places your mind can take you. Wow, Lauren, thank you for issuing that warning to our listeners. <laughs> it's just kind of like, I hope, I hope none of our listeners are, are, you know, on this path or, you know, if, if so, they, they should be listening to you. I think that we had our episode with Kate Casey where we talked about um, Mother God and yes. the, her followers that were completely let off a cliff. And I just mm -hmm. think that everyone is naive to not acknowledge that these people and people across time have been led to believe crazy yes. things that have led them to do horrific things. Yes. It's like the Stanford yes. prison experiment, you yeah. know? So we're going to keep this brief because there's so much of this where it came from. So if you mm -hmm. are fixated on stuff like this, you want to go read it, go for it. Um, we're going to keep it brief for the sake of, you know, our sanity, but here's one entry. So this is on July 10th and July 11th, page 10 of the journal. So Ruby wants R, this is a summary. Ruby mm -hmm. wants R to find God, R is one of her children, and to fast and to pray, and that R is in and out of possession. So basically saying that, you know, the child is being possessed and being in and out of being possessed. She says that the only thing consistent about R, her child, is that he lies. Okay, so this must be talking about a different child, but Ruby writes, I gave her a pixie haircut. All her long hair is gone. No more distracting with the hair. Mm -hmm. Another quote, R told me he would rather have a glass of water than me as his mother. Ruby says that E manipulates her. She won't scream when Jody is around, but with Ruby, she wails and cries and hits her head on the tile floor. <sighs> Here's another quote. R was told to stand in the sun with his sun hat. He is defiant. No. I tell him a couple more times, R, or should I say his demon stays in the shade? I push R into the sun. R comes back. I come back with a cactus poker. When I poke his back to get in the sun, R doesn't even Ugh. flinch. I poke him in the neck. He's in a trance Ugh. and doesn't appear to you feel anything. Oh my yeah. Gosh. So this is the other thing that came out. So in a recorded call between Frankie and her now estranged husband a day after her arrest, she calls the situation a witch hunt. She says that the devil has been after her for years and that all of the abuse has been exaggerated. So this is what she said to her husband. Adults have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil and what that takes to fight it. And so I don't know any other adults, she said, that are going to see the truth. She goes on to say that Satan has taken away everything that she loves and that she's a good woman, quote, who doesn't do naughty things. I mean... To think that your children are possessed by the devil to the point of torturing them, it's it's fathomless once again. I just wonder, is there any world or possibility where this is grounds for like, I don't want this to happen. I don't want her to be left let off. But you read these journals and you hear these quotes and clearly she's insane. Like well, clearly she's not of correct mind. Well, she pled guilty. Oh, right, right, right. So she's, yeah, it's, it's done. Um, well, that's good because she's obviously a danger to the public if she actually is still believing this. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I saw, which was that they had like, there's a photo of a little like concoction in a little Tupperware that was cayenne pepper and honey. And she would rub that into the wounds that her children had. I can't imagine what these children endured. The healing that needs to take place. If you could yeah. ever heal from something like this. It reminds me, there was this one book that was like super popular when I was in, I think, elementary school or middle school about a young boy who was abused. Um, I think it was called like A Child Called It. Anyway, I remember I read it because I was just, you know, curious and yeah. it was just so traumatizing to read. And uh, descriptions of child abuse, it's just not what we do on this podcast. It's really horrific. And, you know, I hope she rots in prison and then in hell. Yeah, I think there's something really scary about people who feel like they have permission from God to use violence, which is I mean, what was exactly what was happening here. Except that itself is a big biblical tale, right? So I'm not going back to church anytime soon, folks. I'll just say that. <laughs> I guess we're we're back to being done with church. We we are back to where we started, Chandler. Thank you so much for listening to this pod, for loving the show. We're gonna have a subscriber episode this week discussing what this whole experience has been like over the past two weeks, doing a Q&A. We also are going to have another subscriber episode launching this week mm -hmm. that we recorded you know, before Kate's announcement. So if you want to hear what the experience was like as you know, that was happening. So lots to come. We'll be back next week with a fresh episode, of course. Paul Apologist, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere, baby. Love you, sis. Love ya. Bye. Bye.